High School Basketball on Bear Country 95.3. Tonight's game, the All-Star Games from Smith Academy. Good evening, everyone. Live from Sherry Webb Gymnasium at Smith Academy in Hatfield. Welcome to the 2018 All-Star Games for the Hampshire Franklin IAA BO Board 28. Jeff Terrell, Bobby C. Courtside, Dave Reno, our studio producer. A night of fun, a night of basketball, a night of raising money for student athletes, furthering their education beyond high school. And Bobby, a chance one more time for the seniors to lace them up and play some b-ball. Well, this will be a showcase, probably the way you would see if you were going to go to an NBA All-Star game, where it'll be a lot of offense, a little bit of defense, maybe a little showboating here and there. That's all part of the fun. But I think the most important part of this event is that the officials, the ones that end up refing these games all year long, are putting together a scholarship fundraising opportunity to be able to showcase these seniors, and I think that is awesome. Yep, they've done this every year going back to 1982, so for over 30 years, well over 30 years, actually going on 40 years, the officials have been doing this. That's their way of giving back. You know, the officials, when you go to a game, the officials, they're not always the friends or the fans and even some of the players and the coaches. It's kind of a, a weird dynamic, a weird relationship, but at their core, they love basketball and they love these kids and this is their chance to get back now. Well, you know, it's funny because I think the reason why you and I are here is the same reason. We do love the kids and we do love the game of basketball and it's going to be fun to be able to see these ladies go first here with this great all-star game here tonight. One thing I wanted to say, Jeff, that I thought was great is the opportunity for me to be here tonight, but unfortunately, uh, Chris Collins was the one who was supposed to be set in and I just want to say that, Chris, we hope you get well, buddy. It's a big day for you tomorrow. we got two big games that we're doing and we want you to get well, all right? I just want to make sure I let people know that because this is my first time I've ever been to an all-star game in all the years I've been helping you guys out with basketball. It is so. a lot of fun. A lot of fun for sure. We're going to take a time out here on our pregame show. We'll be back with more pregame live from Hatfield on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. All right, back at Shuri Webb Gymnasium, we get set for the boys' all-star game. And, of course, uh, we are not going to see these Hampton boys because they've got bigger fish to fry tomorrow. they got Watertown down in Springfield College tomorrow for a state championship. But there is no shortage of talent on display here for this boys' game here tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing these guys go at it. You know, I look at some of these bigger guys that yeah. are thinking about what they were going to do and they're sort of staging things out right now. Yep. I can see them talking to each other about what the game plan is going to be. <laughs> but you know what the most important thing is? Is that we're here to be able to raise money to be able to give scholarships to seniors and senior athletes. Yes. And that's exactly what the Referees Association, this uh, board, has been able to do, like you said, for an awful long time, Jeff. Yes, they have. Going back to 1982, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to, uh, I, you know, I can't think of a better cause, a young person who, uh, you know, may not have the means to pursue higher education. You know, they certainly have the academic background, but maybe they don't have the means. And that's where the officials can step in and say, you want to go to school, we're, we're going to help you along. That's awesome. And, you know, I don't even care if it's a $500 scholarship for seven different players every year. That's 500 bucks that they didn't have when they first got ready to go into college. So it was just an honor to be able to be chosen as one of those scholarships. And not only that, but to be a part of this great event is wonderful for our seniors. And I just want to say that each one of these seniors has given a lot to their schools, has represented their schools with pride and dignity, and we're looking forward to being able to say thank you right here on the radio and right here at Sherry Webb Gymnasium tonight. The home team is the East All-Stars, including their one All-Star from the home team, Smith Academy, that is Matt Bully. We're going to see him on display, but also kids from Amherst, Athol, Belchertown, Granby, 
Hopkins, Mahar, Turners, and Ware. The visiting team is the West. Again, no East Hampton All-Stars. Ant Moynihan, Sophie Peck playing in a state final, but we got uh, Seth Aldrich from Franklin County Tech, Ben Lasowski of Frontier, and then you've got players from Gateway, Greenfield, Hampshire, Mohawk, Northampton, Pioneer, Smith Volk, and South Hadley. They're all going to be introduced in just a couple of minutes. We'll take another timeout. We'll come back. Introduction of all the players, the entire All-Star roster, National Anthem, and the opening tip-off, the boys' All-Star game, next on Bear Country 95.3. Yeah, we can't all-star games. Now that the girls game is over, we will move to the boys game. First, the designated visiting team, the West Boys. From Franklin County Tech, number three, Seth Aldrich. From Gateway Regional, number double zero, Nathaniel Busher. From Greenfield High School, number 21, Colin Cloutier. From Hampshire Regional, number 10, David Helms. From Mohawk Trail Regional, number 50, Jonathan Schutze. From Northampton High, number 10, Diego Karadamatai. From Northampton High School, number 11, Andy Gregor-Shevitz. From Pioneer Valley Regional, number 5, Brendan Iman. From Pioneer Valley Regional, number 20, Jordan Lofman. From Pioneer Valley Regional, number 25, Mike Menard. From Smith Vocational, number 15, Louis Acosta. From South Hadley, number 20, Calvin Bridges. Also selected but unable to participate tonight from East Hampton High School, Ann Moynihan and Sophie Peck, and from Frontier Regional, Ben Litzkowski. The coaches for the West are Ray Hart from Northampton High, and Lee Mollison from Hampshire Regional. Now our designated home team, the East Boys, from Amherst High School, number 12, Kyle Murray. From Amherst, number 21, Tate Reeker. From Athol High, number 20, Evan Siza. From Granby High School, number 2, Ryan Sheehan. From Hopkins Academy, number 12, Justin Seattle. From Hopkins Academy, number 13, John Earl. From Hopkins Academy, number 25, Jonathan Morrison. From Mahar Regional, number 11, Brennan Nalu. From Mahar Regional, number 13, Sam Paul. From Mahar Regional, number 22, Quinn Gervais. From Smith Academy, number 43, Matt Booley. From Turner Falls High School, number 15, Jimmy Long. Also selected, but now in attendance, from Belchertown, Cyrus Reigns and Nolan Vogel. From Ware, Ryan Johnson. The coaches for the East are Matt Zerneri from Smith Academy and Gene Rich from Ware. Your officials for this evening game, Mr. Matt Bardsley, Mr. Scott Wood, and Mr. John Wills. 
At this time, we'd like to ask everyone to rise and remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem, which will be performed by Mr. Kevin Hollister. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant. So with that, we are set for the boys all-star game again. The girls game could not have been closer. The West by a single point, 69-68 over the East. We get set for East versus West, boys version. And again, congratulations to Dave Kerr, the outgoing athletic director here at Smith Academy, winner of the Tom Cove Memorial Award. We're going to be chatting with him uh, here in just a little bit. And congratulations to Belcher Town High School, winners of the Sportsmanship Award. All right, we are just about set for a little bit of hoopla here, Bobby. We enjoyed that girls game. They set the bar awfully high. We'll see how the boys fare here tonight as we get ready for a little bit of showtime. I like showtime. <laughs> I do. I like showtime, especially when we're doing a nice showcase like this for the fans. This will be a lot of fun. John Morrison for the East will be jumping center against Andy Grigor Shevitz of Northampton High for the West. 20 minute halves, 30 second shot clock. The ball is in the air and the tip is controlled by the West. And you're gonna see a really rapid fire shooting right off the jump, a three ball for the right side is good. Nice shot right there by Matei, huh? Let's get things going. Three nothing right off the jump for the West East. Their opening possession, three ball left side. That is no good. Put back up and in. And that's John Roll on the rebound. Three two in favor of the West. East back on the attack all the way through Helms out of Hampshire Regional. The lane is good. Wow. Buckle up, Bobby. You're gonna see Woo. this all night long. It's like watching. Uh, it's like watching those East Hampton boys. Sheehan on the right side. They work it. And this is Justin Siaglo of Hopkins. He'll launch a tray. That is good. Wow, these guys are moving and grooving. We're tied at five, less than a minute in. Bobby, you're, you're actually going to try to keep score here. I'm going to give it a go. That shot rims out no good. Sheehan from Granby throws it up on the right. Here comes Siaglo, fakes the three, dumps it down low to his teammate, John Morrison. Oh, just rimmed out on him, no good. Uh, Grigor Shevitz, uh, I thought he was going to try to line up. All the way through, and Calvin Bridges misses on that lay-in. Back quickly on the other side, they dump it down low. Missed, but tip followed Earl. by John Earl. John Earl usually out beyond the perimeter, but he's cleaning up down low. Yeah, hey, looking good here. Hellums for three, back rim no. Rebound taken down. Matei another three. That shot, however, is no good. And the rebound is pulled down. Coming back quickly in the lane. That shot, no good. Tip followed by Morrison, no, between two defenders. Battle for the board. Nicely Lane done down low. Able to put that one back up and in. <laughs> and That's called missing your assignment, literally. <laughs> Andy Gregor Shevitz, the big guy, drove all the way through, laid it up easily. It's 9 7 now in favor of the East. Three pointer on the right side is good. Makes it 12 to seven. Points are coming at a frenetic pace here. We're trying to keep up here. Helms, there goes Shevitz, the big guy. He'll take a three. 
Short. Helms, though, gets the rebound. Little spin move right in the lane, and the teardrop shot is no good. Clear to your battling for the ball. Gregor Shevitz, though, puts Gregor it up and in. Nice job right there by Gregor Shevitz, big boy. 12-9, John Morrison will take a three. He'll make a three. Wow, look at these guys from Hopkins. They're it's, getting it done, do you the think, big three. Do you think we're hitting triple digits, Bob? Yeah, matter of fact, uh, I decided to not keep score, folks. Uh, it's, too, it's way too hard. Helms trying to reverse lay in, no good. Coming back quickly is John Earl. Left wing, three ball. In and out, no good. Rebound is pulled down. Karata Matai gets it over on the left side. Helm sealed off on the lane, his pass. Ends up in Calvin Bridges, Karata Matai. Hits it back, top of the key. Here comes Colin Cloutier, driving through, puts it up, no good. Rebound picked back up again by the West. Three point bomb put up, finally a rebound by Justin Siaglo. On the right side, Morrison, he'll take another three. That is no good. Rebound comes down to the West, running it up on the right. Taking it coast to coast. Shot no good, but a blocking foul. <laughs> And just a lot, of, even when the foul was committed, it's just a lot of smiles. Oh, yeah. And that's on John Morrison. You, you know what's funny is I'm looking at a couple of these kids. A couple of these kids are winded, hey. Yeah. They're running up and down that court here with 6.36 left here in the first half. Yeah, Tate Reekert of Amherst was one of them who's kind of grabbing his shirt. Yeah, they're just yeah. They're running the floor. First free throw is up and good. And looks at 15-10. One more. Trying to bring his team back to within four. It's on the way. It is good. 15-11 our score here in favor of the East. Back on the attack. On the right side, Siaglo, three. Back rim, no. Colin Cloutier gets the deep rebound from Greenfield High School. Team that made the tournament but bowed out quickly to number deep three ball on the right side. Helms, a little bit short there. Re deep rebound comes out to Earl, gets it to Siaglo. Ryan Sheehan, he'll take a three. Left side, good. Nice shot right there by Sheehan. That was a great shot. Buried it. Matt Bully from the home school here, Smith Academy, getting set to check in along with four other guys. We're coming down to our first radio timeout. Gregor Shevitz <laughs> went for the dunk. John Morris said, said no way. He picked up the foul. And I think we're going to take our timeout here, I believe, at 15.59. And no, no indication that we're, I thought that they would have him shoot after the timeout, but I guess they're going to do it right here. Gregor Shevitz, yeah, I told him, I said, Andy, have fun tonight. I asked about the pronunciation on his name. He gave it to me. He's used to it. First free throw is good. He'll get one more. And then I said, have fun. He said, I will. And I said, hey, you're going to throw one down, right? And he said, absolutely. Yeah, he and was, he will, too. He was about to. Throw a couple of them down. Morrison just denied him. He is a big, big guy. Andy Grigor Shevitz stands 6-5. We'll step aside for the break. 15-59 left to play here in the opening half. It's 18-12 in favor of of the East, back after this. <laughs> All right, Grigor Shevitz now will be shooting his second free throw here. <laughs> okay. With 15.59 to play, it's an 18-11 lead in favor of the East. Spins it, shoots it, and gets the roll. And now he will come off, so he would have come off at that Media timeout, but he's off now. Oh, I like that change. Got him for Iman. Uh, I like Bre that. Uh, Brendan Iman checks oh, in. That's a good move right there. For the Pioneer Panthers. Okay, play back on now. And it's Sam Paul from the Mahar Centers. Ball got tipped out of bounds. It's off the east, actually. West will get it with a chance to get a little bit closer here. Imagine if you had those two guys uh, on the same line. <laughs> I know. Jonathan Schutze of Mohawk goes through. That shot is too strong, no good. And here comes Melu, dishing it to the teammate. Oh, unable to hit though. And we're going the other side. <coughs> Pioneers got uh, Mike Menard out there for the uh, West All Stars, and Menard's going to take a three. That's his shot. It is no good. Sam Paul gets the rebound. He <laughs> ran to his teammate Quinn Gervais. Quinn has it right now, right of the lane, sealed off. Schutze with a steal. Schutze, of course, a Mohawk warrior. They had a tough season. Very young team. And they really were struggling offensively uh, earlier in the year. Started to come on late. Brendan Iman hit from the foul line. You know, he's had a really nice shot from around the foul line throughout the whole playoffs even for Pioneer. 
Melu, fadeaway J from the left side. Smallest guy on the court, right. man. Long pass down low to Iman, and he tried to save it on the baseline, could not quite do it, and the East team will get it back. They lead by five, 14-48 to play here in the first half. Three-point bomb right side, that was way off, but the put back right. up and in. And that's Melu on the, the bucket there. Coming all the way through. Lofman can't quite hit it with the left hand. Here comes Matt Bully from Smith Academy. Nice dish, right side. And Melu finishes again. Wow, what a great job right there. And the lead is nine. And as we mentioned, usually these All-Star games, a matter of runs. We saw it in the girls' game. We're seeing it here as well. Let's see now if the West can answer. Three-point bomb by Acosta on the right side, no good. Schutze, though, gets the weak side rebound. Menard, deep on the left. He'll launch. That shot is no good. Coming back quickly now is Murray from Amherst. On the left side, all the way through, goes up strong. No foul by Brendan Emond. Kyle Murray out of Amherst. Now, last show, I'm trying to think where we were. Frontier, I believe, and the Amherst kids were way above the rim all night long. Oh, they all were night all long night long. Above the rim. Yeah. Sweet stuff to watch. Free throw is good by Murray, and Kyle, who stands 6-1, will get one more here. He literally forgot to put his uniform on when he first got out there to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Second free throw is good. The lead is 11 now. All right. Uh, come on, Wes. Let's see if they can come up with an answer here. Acosta has it on the right wing. Into the paint. Kicks it left side. Shootsy. Foul line, Iman, he hit before, hits again. Yeah, that's a nice shot for him. Set him up. Yeah, he's uh, had a nice shot like that throughout, like I said, over the last five or six games. Sam Paul, the lefty hook is good as he drove the lane. Tough to defend that. Ooh. Oh, what a play by Murray. <laughs> Came back and hit the bucket off the steal. 30 to 17, a 13 point lead now for Team East. Coming through, Mike Menard sealed off. Got it to Acosta. Acosta sealed off. No look pass. Left side. Jumper by Schutze is no good. Here comes Murray. Murray, nice dish on the left side. Goes out of bounds. Good to see you, brother. We got a couple of officials. Oh, it's going to be, oh, it's gonna be Dave Blanchett. Okay. Couldn't ask for a better guy, hey. Dave Blanchett. Here yeah, we go. He, uh, he's, he, folks, he's rather shy. Doesn't <laughs> always like to take a microphone and talk on it. <laughs> There ain't a mic that guy ever missed. Uh, I'm ever kidding, missed of a hold of. Yeah, we love him. We love him. All righty. Dave Blanchett, longtime official. Not as long as Kreitzy. How long have you been in the game there, Dave, by the uh, way? At least 35 years. 35 years on uh, oh. on this board down here when I moved down from Berkshire yeah. County. Probably close to 40 total. Okay, long, 40. Lo longer than I realized. All yeah, right. I mean, I can remember uh, refereeing uh, Aaron Campbell's senior day, and now I'm refereeing his kids <laughs> in another year or two. So I've been around That's for a while. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, it's speaking of Aaron Campbell, he, he, he's bald and old now, so. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so these kids get faster every year. That's yeah, true. Yeah, it's true, isn't yeah, it? That's true. That's uh, true. Well, I'll talk to you. I'll ask you about, uh, here's Jonathan Schutze putting one up and no good. Murray the board. It's a 10-point game right now. We'll get back to the game here in a minute, but we'll like to talk with these uh, with these officials. And we'll talk to you after our media timeout, Dave. You have to wait. One minute, big guy. We'll be back after this. A one-minute break. Bear Country, 95.3. <laughs> All right, we're back here in Hatfield, and uh, he was waiting to take the mic, and then we went to commercial. <laughs> but Dave Blanchett joins us courtside. Dave, uh, 40 odd years in the game. You like Christ, you've been doing this a long time. So the natural question is this: Why, why would one do this for as long as you have done it? I, I just enjoy doing this. Um, it makes the winter go by fast. You know, um, that's a plus. It, it is, and because winters can be lost and it can be really long, but it's it's just to watch these kids. You know, from the time they're freshmen as they progress up through their senior year, watch how these kids progress, and then you watch some of them as they move on to college. You know, you got Jake Rowe at Springfield and uh, uh, Cam Rowe from South Hadley. That's at Springfield. They're in the Final Four. Yep. I remember watching those kids come up and grow as players, and it's just. You know, and then you kind of, you know, when you get to the tournament, you start rooting for your locals. I know you guys enjoy the run you had with, you know, Pioneer this year, Greenfield girls, you know, the Hopkins boys. So, you know, it's it's a great thing. And, and what you guys do, it's you don't see a lot of it out there 
Um, you know, Bobby C., you, Jeff, um, you know, in the fall, I see you guys at the football games. You will be Bear Country. The, the, the service you provide to do this for the kids is great because you go down in Springfield, you don't get games on the radio. I'm going to be honest with you. When I'm doing a college game and I'm driving back from somewhere, I put Bear Country on to try to catch the end of the game to see who's won. And I, I really, nice, that's the nice. truth. I do that. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. So, I, you know, thank you guys for what you do for high school athletics. Talk about the uh, talk about the camaraderie. I know you've made a, t- you know, if you officiate long enough, you make friends fast and, and furious. You end up with a whole, you know, it's a fraternity. You guys are out there. You have to work together. A lot of people you don't realize that even though it might be two or three officials singularly out there you're, you're a unit right yeah it is and it's you know when you're around long enough you get to work with guys you know I, like I said been doing for 40 years um, and some of my best friends I've made through officiating Jerry Burgess you know Nate Burdick um, both in the house Stevie tonight Kreitz, you know Steve guys Kreitz that have been around house, for a yeah. long time Glenn Mallett you know these are guys that you know you catch up with a couple of times during the summer you play golf you have a couple beers with um, it's and it's it's just, it's just fun group of guys you know um back in the day years ago on friday nights you know after games we used to go to joe's and and have a couple pizzas and a few beers we don't do that as often as we did anymore some of the newer guys you know we're trying to bring them along that way but and it's just it's it's like you said it's a fraternity it's it's a bunch of guys that enjoy doing what we're doing some of us have have moved on and do some college you know division three division two women's college but it's uh you know, we look forward to winter. I look forward to the basketball season. Then when it's done, I'm, it's done. So, Dave, you know, obviously you can't do this forever. There'll come a time when you'll hang up your whistle and you'll hand in your jersey. Um, always uh, always wanting to get uh, the new officials, the younger guys, and, and younger guys and gals out there to, offici- uh, to officiate. And I know that there's always been a big push uh, to replenish the ranks as we as we go along through the years. But, uh, again, you, you have painted a picture of something that, that the joy you get out of that, the fun you get out of it, more than overcomes having coaches and fans in your ear for 32 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's again, it's something I've enjoyed doing. I started doing it actually um, when I was in high school I, at Hoosick Valley. We would practice on Sunday mornings, and then the, the youth would play in the afternoon. And a lot of us players would hang around, and we'd ref those games after. And that's how I started doing it. When I lived in the Berkshires, I also did baseball and softball. Um, guys like Eddie Ladley, who was the longtime Wakona coach. Sure, and, yeah. And oh, yeah, Ladley. Great yeah. umpire, great so, official. Saw him at the cage over the weekend. Yeah. Good um, to see him. You know, Tommy McGrath, whose son Sean is in a Berkshire's rough, and they were kind of my mentors. And, uh, you know, and everybody needs a mentor as you come up to kind of br- bring you along. But it's it's just been, you know, it's been a great profession. I enjoy doing it. I hopefully can do it for a few more years um, as long as the legs hold up. 36-27 is our score as the East All-Stars have led throughout and they're going to kick it over the right side. There's Justin Siaglo off a feed from his teammate, John Earl, Hopkins Academy. They got knocked off that, that race of my brows. Pioneer came up and plucked them off. That was something. Well, I think, and I'm, you know, I think the fact that Pioneer being Drury surprised Hopkins. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, and I think yep. it surprised them. I think them. you're right. I'll buy and that. I think they went into yep. that game with a little different attitude, as if it was Drury that they were going to play. Yeah, they had already is. beaten them twice fairly easily. Yep. And uh, you know, Pioneer wasn't the same team at the end of the year that they were at the beginning. Oh, That's what no. I want people oh, to no. understand. And just like I told everybody the other night when we did that East Hampton game, where Sutton ended up beating um, East Hampton on the 15th of December. They were a different team the other night, what we saw. Let me tell you, over at AIC. Same way. I mean, Drury beat Pioneer earlier in the year by, what, 30, 35? Yep. I know Pioneer was missing some players, but you've got to come ready to play every night, yeah, especially they, high school kids. Yeah, Very they, true. You know? they, were, they were peaking at the perfect, uh, perfect time of the season, and they got uh, young Garrett Cody uh, coming back next year as well. 39-29, a 10-point lead right now for the East. The West desperately trying to get back into this game and they're going to spot up three left side would have been good for two no good and they got the hopkins kids out here here comes john morrison he's been living beyond the arc he's going to drive through and he got fouled by david hellum so you've seen over the years you've, oh we're going to go guess what we're done <laughs> dave blanchett thank you dave, so much for coming great by to see you my friend i'll we'll take a, a one minute timeout, and we are back after this here on bear country 95.3 with the east Leading the West by 10. 
All right, play back on here at Sherry Webb Gymnasium, Smith Academy, Hatfield. Jeff and Bobby, Dave Reno, our studio producer, 41-29 in favor of the East in the boys' all-star game. We're a little over halfway through the first half, so these teams are trending to score way up there. Now pleased to be joined by the outgoing athletic director here at Smith Academy, Greenfield native, and 2018 Tom Cove Memorial Award winner, Dave Keir. Dave, thanks a lot for dropping by. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. I know getting awards isn't the reason why you get into education and uh, you know sports administration and the like, but that's pretty cool. That this award, this award in particular, I know you know all about it. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was around when we instituted this award many years ago. I was a, a great friend of Tom Cole was a great friend of mine. Uh, sometimes I said joke to a couple people that you know. Only people who knew Tom Cove can get this award, so <laughs> at least at this point. But that's right. Um, you know, it, he was a great guy. Uh, always a very calm demeanor. He was always one sort of one speed out there on the court. He was never a hot, too high, never too low. Oh, always hurry. in control of the game and himself, and uh, just a true gentleman. Uh, well, that's all I wanted to ask you about because as time, and this is just the way it is, as time goes by when people who don't know individuals that are memorialized with an award, they, they see the name, they, they don't connect the dots, they don't make the connection. But a, a, as a man, as a person, uh, tell us and tell our listeners who obviously didn't know this guy, who, who yeah, he was. Yeah, he was, he was a true gentleman. He was a good family man, and uh, you know he was always there to help out, he, and uh, he was a good mentor to the younger officials. Um, you know, when I was coming up through the ranks, he was he was one of our senior officials. It was always enjoyable to work with him because you always learn something from him every time you get a chance to work with him. And uh, just to watch him and observe him and how he handled himself out there was was really uh, top notch. Uh, he he liked some of the guys that, as Dave was just talking about before. You know, he he did some college some college work. He was uh, you know did some high school work, and you know he just if you needed him to be there, he was there. You know, he was the kind of guy that when, when the phone rang, he showed up. You know, there are coaching trees, um, you know, and I've seen it in graph form. It, it, this coach assisted for them, and he goes over this program, and it's all interconnected. The officiating tree leading from that guy goes from here to there, yep. and then back again, right? Absolutely, I mean, for sure. Everywhere, yep, yeah. For sure. I mean, uh, you know, if you ever if you talk to Jerry Burgess, he'll tell him Tom Cove is one of his mentors. Yep. Jerry's one of the best <laughs> officials around. Uh, he been is. Been around for a long time. Well, so haven't we, you know. We've known Bergie forever. We've known you forever. I mean, I was just uh, talking to you as a, during the break before we got you on here that you were our camp counselor at Camp Apex. And, you know, we go back, you and I and Jeff, over 45 years. I mean, it's pretty impressive that we've been able to have that friendship with you. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy for you to get that award here today and especially here in a gym that you know very well. Yep, yep. Uh, this, I've, been, I've been in this gym for 35 years, so uh, it's, it's, it's home another <laughs> second home to me so um, I, it's a great I, place to be. Well I was going to ask you about that I, I know obviously I know a lot of athletic directors and I know that uh, <laughs> they have days their day begins early it ends very late and, and that's that's more the norm than that than having a day where it's a little bit lighter so it's it, it's a gig but what what is it that you've enjoyed in your career as you as the finish line for you is now in sight believe it or not. <laughs> It's you know you do it because of the kids you do it so you want to make it you, you know you want to make their educational experience good and you do the things for them it's not for personal gratification it's not for the money that's for sure um, it's to provide you know I, I live in this community I've worked in this community for 35 years I've lived in this community for over 20 years and uh, you know I have kids in school where, where I had their parents in school years ago and it's just. You know, that's what you do it for. You do it to, to make sure that they have a great experience um, for their high school careers. And you, uh, yeah, and you can count as a colleague and a friend, one of the all-timers, Sherry Webb. Absolutely. She's, uh, she's been a mentor to me since I was 22 years old. You know, uh, she was here when I got here, and uh, she's taught me a lot over the years uh, as to how to be a, a, a teacher, how to be a coach, how to be a man, how to be a, an administrator. You know, how to, how to relate to people, and uh, I couldn't have asked for a better person to, 
to teach me the ropes for oh, sure. Oh, and I will absolutely. say she is one of my favorite people. Um, I have so much respect for Sherry. Uh, the way that she's always treated us every time that we've come into this gym or whether it's at an MIAA gig. As you know, we've done a lot of games here. And, you know, Dave brought it up. There's not many people that get a chance to be able to uh, have their sports on the radio like right. we do here. And we are going to pick up on that. I hope you can stick around because I definitely want to talk about this school in particular. We'll take a quick break here. It is 61-37 in favor of the East that they has uh, really opened up a 24-point lead. We're back after this on Bear Country. These guys are great. I know. <laughs> I'm having fun, brother. I just uh, want you to know we, that. <laughs> we are back here at uh, Cherry Webb Gymnasium in Hatfield as the West just got a three from David Helms as they're trying desperately to get back in this game. Bobby, this is your first All-Star game. 21 points can be made up, by the way. Okay. The All-Star game is always a run, <laughs> and you, you never know. But this uh, this East team looks like they're going to get at least 100 points. They're at yeah. 61, and we still have a few moments for halftime. And you got to remember one other thing, too. Soapy Peck isn't here, and Aunt Moynihan's not here because they got big games tomorrow. They have bigger fish and to they fry. Been on that, and they would have been on the team that's losing by 21. By the way. All right, John Roll on a breakaway lays it up and in. 63 on the board now. Dave Keir, the Tom Cove Award winner, and he's hosting us here at Smith Academy tonight. I want to talk about this school in particular. When you're an AD at a school like this, uh, well, I'll just put it to you this way. I, I, we used to um, run a phone cord into the school office back there, and that's how we used to broadcast from. Now, I was in there one day, and I saw a bunch of pictures of the kids up on, on, on a bulletin board, and I found out that it was, it was the entire senior class on that board. And I thought, you know, this is so cool. It's like everybody knows everybody here. This, tight, this Smith Academy, for all intents and purposes, is it's Hatfield High School. You get some school choice kids that like to come here, but it's Hatfield High School, small town, and you got all these kids, they all know each other, and I think, you know, how cool is this? You get to some of these bigger schools, and there's plenty of people that you don't know. So it's really kind of a cool thing here. It is. I've, I've actually, uh, you know, I've had the privilege of being here for 35 years, and, and uh, you know, I was lucky back in 1983 to get hired to, to work here. I didn't know it at the time, but you certainly learned about it over the course of time, and... Yeah. Um, you know, it's been great. Yeah, it's it is small town. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, you know, there's 190 or something kids here in grades seven through 12. Uh, we do have a lot of school choice kids there because they choose to come to a small place like this where yep. they can get the individual attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, some people are some people think uh, everybody knows your business, but everybody does know your business. But it's a good thing because <laughs> we watch every you know the whole it takes a, it takes a village to raise a child and. And we have a great village here that uh, that helps to raise these kids. Brendan Emon's had a fine game. He just got blocked on this trip down the court. 68-45. So the lead now again at 23 for the East All-Stars. What was great, uh, so now I know you've been here since 83. What was just mind-blowing to some people, but may maybe not for people around here, were some of those great boys teams of the early 90s, not only competing out here, but taking care of business, going, taking it to the state level, playing schools way larger than Smith, and getting it done. It was, it was, a, it was a great time back in the early 90s, and <laughs> you know, there were kids that were on actually both of those teams, you know, like a kid like Mark Mulherin and, Mulherin, yeah. and uh, Kyle Cahill, who were players on those teams. Uh, you saw Billy Skorupski here tonight uh, say, helping, out, okay. yeah, helping out with the teams. He was yeah. a 90, grad, class of 94, Mike, so Mike the he, and, yeah. he might have been on the 92 team, you know, who as a, as a sophomore or a freshman, I forget. Uh, but yeah, Mike the Burge and some of those other guys. You look at that that thousand point banner and see how many names are over there. Yeah. Uh, when I, back when I officiated, I'd always stand it before the game and look at the thousand point banners in each gym and say, yep, 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 and count how many thousand point kids are on that banner that I officiated games for so it was always fun to look at yeah, it is. I remember I remember of course the the Wickles family you know when you think of this area you think you say Wickles of course it, yeah. it fits and who was ref in the first game but Mr. Wickles right. you know? Mark, Mark Wickles, Mark yeah. Wickles yeah. great guy you know absolutely for sure so it's yeah. just a really cool town and uh, I gotta I, I gotta tell you man I've I've got friends here and it's been a great little community, and I'm so glad to be here tonight. And one of my friends is Sherry Webb. I'm yep. very lucky. Coming down to the last few seconds of this half, three-point bomb left side. So it looks like it'll be the East taking a, at least a 22-point lead in the halftime. Oh, Sam Paul's going to jack the three, and he knocks it down. It's a 25-point lead. 
Exclamation oh, point on the first half. Buzzer right there. All righty, so listen, we're going to let you go. Uh, thank you so much once again. Congratulations early on the upcoming retirement and, of course, the Tom Cove Memorial Award winner. Well-deserved day here. Congratulations and thank you. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. We're hey, glad you guys were here we tonight. We love you, man. Absolutely. You're, 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 part of our, you're still part of our Greenfield community too, buddy. We will take a time <laughs> out here. Our halftime report coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barrie, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. All right, second half underway, and it's a 25-point lead, 75-50 in favor of the East, and they score again right off the jump. They're at 77, Bob. Not only are they going to clear 100, they may go 120 here. Uh, I they made a prediction, 132-94 final. 132-94, I'm going to write that down. All right. 132-94. Yep. On the right side, Siaglo, Trey, back rim, no. Rebound taken down by David Hellams. Long pass down court. They try to get it to Grigorshevitz. Dipsy new drive, Calvin Bridges, a little bit too much on that. And back the other way. Oh, high pass way over Ryan Sheehan's head. The kid from Granby It's going to go back to the West All-Stars. Again, they have some work to do here. Well, I will say that this crowd's been fun. Uh, nice crowd here tonight. Great cause. Great atmosphere. Great award. Congratulations to Belchertown on a sportsmanship award, which you'd love to see in high school athletics. So, been a great night. Thank Cal you very much, buddy. Calvin Bridges drives the lane, could hit. John Morrison's going to take a three, book it. He is hit. He's hit like six threes here today. Well, because he's <laughs> able to do some things that Angelo necessarily won't won't let him do. That's right. And this is. is a night to just. Oh, and a big block by Johnny Morrison goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the West. But he does that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, true. That's something he does all the time. He always is blocking shots. But for him to get out there and shoot a lot of threes is not normal John Morrison, let me tell you. He's having fun here tonight. The inbound at Calvin Bridges. Rainbow three, left side, got it. Three. Nylon, baby. Um, South Hadley High School, 80 to 53. 27-point lead. Does, no, real quick three pull out. Oh, Murray from Amherst hits that one. Kyle Murray, his brother Mikael Murray was the MVP last year. It's raining threes. <laughs> On the right side, another three. That window rimmed out. And rebound comes down. Running it up on the left side. Between the circles, they hand it back. Another three bomb. That Ooh. one is too strong out of bounds. We are going the other way. It'll be the West ball, but they trail by 30 points. Now, I say it's a game of runs and that no lead is safe. I think the lead of 30 with 18 minutes left to play, probably is safe. And as I say that, Calvin Bridges, another three. 83-56, yeah. do they have a run in them? All the way through, the drive, left side. Sheehan will launch, he hits. <laughs> Ryan Sheehan. This, this score is just adding up really fast right now here. They're gonna hit 100 very soon. Oh, that one almost hit the rafters. Bridges was feeling it, missed it that time. Chuck and duck now, Siaglo. Well, he fakes the three, he'll go baseline. Tried to feed the lane, tipped away. Helms gets it, shuffle pass. Grigor Shevitz, throw, oh, he, to, he went to throw it down. He lost it on the way up, but it went in anyway. <laughs> and he's got a big smile as he and heads he's down. he's laughing, court. he's like, oh, that was my chance. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to come down with a thunderous dunk. Three pointer is up and no good. Calvin Bridges to Helms. Alley-oop, Grigor Shevitz, they couldn't time it right. But Brandon Iman cleans up. He's had a fine night. Yeah, you got two big boys up there. A couple of twin towers here from the purple. See if they can get it done here. 
Three-pointer rims out on the near side, and now the West with a chance to get a little bit closer. But they trail by 26 right now, but it was 30 a moment ago. Helms, he hits a three, and here they come. They're back to within 23 now. Hey, there's seven made up. Don't make that. Uh, yeah, seven. Yeah, made seven. Up. They were yeah. down. They were down by 30. Nice move. <laughs> on the left side, John Morrison hits from the left baseline. That was pretty sweet. 88-63. I know it's still bitter in his belly, though, that loss to Pioneer, but give the Panthers credit. Helms puts up a three, no good, tipped around. Calvin Bridges all by himself lays it up and in. Calvin nice job. Bridges. By the way, I know people can't see it because it's radio, but he has some cool earrings, man. Yeah, Those he does. babies are, they're diamonds. Babies are huge. On the left side, Morrison's going to launch another deep shot. Three, that was good for three Calvin again. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, this, this is his last high school basketball game of any sort, so he, he wants to go out on a high note. Calvin Bridges for three. That one is no good. Tip followed by Helms. No. Saved down to the baseline, but it comes down. Little shuffle pass. Siaglo will lay it up in there. Tight on the floor. 15-55 to play in this one. Our score, Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It is the East, 93. The West, 65. Playback on now, Mike Menard of Pioneer just missed a three and it ended up going out of bounds. So back to the east with a 93-65 lead. And that was Melu of uh, Mahar giving it up, shot up and no good. Seth Aldrich of the Tech Eagles gets it to Acosta. You got Menard, Jordan, Lofman out there. See if the Pioneer boys can get it going. Aldrich puts up a three, no good. Loose ball picked up. Menard, he'll take a three. He will make the three. Yep, right in the threes here tonight, no doubt about it. Now, I made my prediction, 132-94. Well, we need the guys from the West to help me out here. Come on, make, make some more threes here. <laughs> <laughs> they have the ball right now. They lose it. Bully had it, got it back. And they shot from the left side for three. There you go. That's up and in. Wow, these guys just keep... They're, they're, they're really shooting the ball really well. That is Sam Paul of the Mahar Senators, one of the great court leaders that I've ever seen. Did a great job coming all the way through. They miss. East back on the attack. But in Melu dumps it down long to his teammate. Pretty good up and in, Quinn Gervais. 98 points, so they're a bucket away from the century mark. Lofman, tricky dribbles, puts it up, got it. 98-70, the lead is 28. So yeah, the East is gonna win the game. Here you go for a century. Three-pointer is no good. Menard gets the deep rebound. Menard between the circles. Colin Cloutier, Clutes for three, yes! The Clute comes up with a big three. All big of a sudden, smile. Clute gets a big three in this one. 98-73 in favor of the West, they dump it down low. Nice backdoor play, they couldn't finish. Quinn Gervais missed, San Paulo got the rebound. New shot clock, goes back to Gervais. Right side, right in front of us, with a foot on the line, got it. Got it, and there's your 100. 100 to 73, that always makes the crowd happy. They love to see those scores. Mike Menard from way downtown. Downtown, he was almost at half court, man. Woo. Missed that one, no look pass to Bully. We need to get the Smith kid to hit here. And Paul, here comes Brennan Melu, went for the bank shot, tough angle, no good. Menard, hoops a pass up ahead of the right. All the way through Acosta, lost the handle, it got knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with the West. You know what's funny, Jeff, is uh, Brennan Melu came over and we were talking for a minute and he goes, I'm gassed, Bobby C. <laughs> <laughs> Who clued you, or clued one of the other three, gives it to Menard, they're gonna let him take it, and that shot is no good, again. They come back quickly, nice dish to Bully, and the Smith Academy kid Matt knocks it in. Matt Bully, nice kid too. 102-73, jumper deep from the left side, that is no good, Acosta skies for the rebound, he'll back it out. Step back three is short, trying to get his own rebound, it comes down, here comes Sam Paul again, stops, pops, no, gave it up. On the right side, shot is up, Evan Siza from the Athol Red Raiders, he misses, but he'll go to the line. Now that's pretty cool. You got Siza playing in the same group with the guys yeah. from across the way. You got Marhar and Athol hanging out together here as a group, and then you got Matt Booley from Smith Academy. 
Free throw is on the way. It is good for Evan Saitza. He'll get one more. 103-73. And I want to say, people might want to Google this, I want to say that was UNLV's margin of victory in the title game back in 1990, March Madness, final against Duke. And now I was want to say the final, for some reason, that score sticks in my head. 103-73. That was the Tarkanian Ooh. running Rebels. With Larry Johnson? That or no? The, um, was Larry was, was, sure was Johnson LJ, with them in that? No, in that I, don't, I don't believe so. No? Okay. I mean, maybe. That's kind of hard to remember. Where's no, George Miller have, when we need yeah, him? Yeah, no. George Miller would give you the answer he'd right give, now. He, he'd give me the starting five <laughs> and the first two guys off the bench. <laughs> he <laughs> He's got an amazing... The encyclopedia <laughs> mind of sports is George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Second free throw good. 103. 375. So yeah, someone can someone can look that up and uh, just post it on Facebook and see if I got it right. But I think it was 103.73. Matt Bully with Matt a three, nice right, shot. right in front of us. 106.75. Bernard Rainbow three, got it. <laughs> Chuck and Duck man, they're just yeah. coming down and launching. Sam Paul, he's gonna take a three. He's got no oh, rim down on him, no good. Clue. The rebound from Greenfield. Colin Cloutier in the paint. Kicks the right side. The Lofman gets it back. Line drive shot is no good. And we have another timeout on the court. 11.51 to play in this one. And the East cruising. It's 106.78 on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Back after this. <laughs> All right, 11.50 left in this one. And driving the lane is John Earl. John All right, Earl. get the defense chant going here, buddy, on a 108-78 game. And joining us here at courtside, official Nate Burdick. It's, uh, hey, we, we do this every year. You come by and we... Uh, a tradition unlike any other. <laughs> no, no, that's next month. <laughs> that's next uh, month. Nate Burdick, uh, Greenfield native, longtime official, and... Uh, Got a nice gig tomorrow. You got the girls D2 final. Are you at uh, Mass Mutual or or, or is that Springfield College? Uh, Mass Mutual Center in downtown Springfield. All right, excellent. Yeah. Um, well, first we're gonna just set the senior. It's 108.78. So yeah, this game has been decided. The question is, will we have two teams over 100? I don't think. Trying to, yeah, we have had that before. Two teams both making it over 100. We already have one. Well, the fans come for the offense. Yeah, they do. The students are trying to give it to them. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bobby got the uh, defense chant going. And like, and <laughs> it lasted 10 seconds. It lasted 10 seconds. <laughs> I should have took the over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big block down low. 110-78 oh, in favor of the East team, the home team here. So, well, we're wrapping up uh, an another All-Star game here in the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. We've had a wonderful time here. We always have a wonderful time. And I know that you officials... You love, love, love to do this for the kids and for the community. It's awesome. It really is. It's a chance for us to give back to the student athletes. And obviously the Casey Scholarship is our primary uh, beneficiary here. Every year we raise thousands of dollars to give out to our student athletes. Uh, typically we give out anywhere from six to seven, five hundred dollar scholarships. So somewhere around three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars worth of scholarships. And it comes from uh, proceeds from this particular game, donations from our individual board members and also uh, ad sponsors in our program from local businesses uh, from all around uh, Franklin and Hampshire County. A lot of them are the same businesses that support uh, high school basketball in Bear Country as well. So very true, very true. We appreciate yeah. their support and they uh, and they step up for uh, for you guys as well. Nate, you're, probably, I know you're, you're very modest, but you started you started refereeing and usually it's kind of a slow progression it, sometimes it can take some time you you got the gig and you moved up very quickly through the ranks you've really dedicated yourself to this profession well it, it, it's a hobby but a lot of us uh, treat it as a little bit more than a hobby and, and as in as is the case in many things it all comes down to the mentorship it all comes down to the the veteran officials that are willing to work with the younger officials and I was very fortunate to have a lot of officials uh, work uh, very closely with me and spend some time with me. Gary Stacy, former Tom Cove uh, Award winner who passed away last year, uh, was very instrumental. And Steve, Steve Kreitz, who was on, uh, on the radio earlier, and Dave Blanchett, and Jerry Burgess, and Glenn Mallett, and Tom Sullivan, and, and 
and, and a lot of those guys took the time and effort to, to really work with me and, and go from there. And now that I've been around for about 10 years, I'm at the point now where some of the younger officials are starting to creep up and, and I'm starting to work with some younger officials as well. Well, it, it works like a tree. You, know, you mentioned a lot of these great names, guys that have been in the, in the game for a long time, and that now you've assumed your place, and now you have people coming under you. There'll be people that will come in under them, as long as we keep the younger people involved. And I think it's important for them to know just how rewarding this can be to spend a winter officiating boys and girls high school basketball. I mean, uh, every official I've ever spoke to just loves it. It is. It, it's a. It's a passion. It's a labor of love, and and it 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 it's a great association of men and women. Uh, our particular board is about a hundred. There's thousands of officials across the state. It's a national organization that's broken down into a state organization. It's broken down to a regional organization, and. The officials that do it for the right reason, it shows in their performance. It really does. And But once again, it's an opportunity to give back. I mean, there's by no means are we making a whole lot of money doing this. And the amount of time and effort and that's spent away from our families in the winter, um, it can be tough. And a lot of us have spouses that are supportive in what we do. But again, it's just, it's just having a passion and wanting to get better for the student athletes. And after two, we're going to come up on our next uh, radio timeout here. But Dave Keir... Really happy to see him honored here with the Cove Award. You know, he, he's not in it to get awards. No, no one is. But yeah, that is a cool award to get. It is. He and, was and very pleased. You yourself are a past winner for your promotion of, of the game here in, in, in Franklin, and Hampshire County. But Dave is, is a typical educator in that he's worn every single hat possible here in the past 30 years as an official, as an administrator, as a teacher, as a coach, uh, as a mentor. Uh, to so many student athletes and there's a guy whose heart is in the right place and it, we couldn't have found a better recipient this year especially yeah, since yeah. we're here in uh, in Smith Academy in the gymnasium yeah yeah so much more than an athletic director he's an educator my wife is an educator and it's a it's a it's a certain breed of people that do that job so absolutely he was a great pick Nate Burdick thanks have, have fun tomorrow thanks for coming by once again thanks appreciate it guys right. thanks for all you do and uh, congratulations for next month big guy the impending <laughs> wedding. Congratulations, absolutely. We'll take a quick time out here. 119.86 our score. 810 to play. Bear Country 95.3. Seth Aldrich got it before yeah, I could. Seth, Seth, <laughs> Seth, Seth, Seth blew you up. No. You know what? I, I'm gonna make a prediction. Three! Here we go. Ready? Seth Aldrich for three. Short. <laughs> Murray the rebound. And then back the other way. Swoops all the way through. A little bit strong on that one. Gregor Shevitz gets it over. Acosta lost the handle. Got it back, though. 119.86. So, big-time blowout for the East. Shot, shot, block. Gregor Shevitz, though, with the putback with the left hand. So, you got Nate Burdick working the girls' D2 final tomorrow. And Andy Rogers, Division I boys. Nice. Two guys that uh, we've been seeing around for a lot of years. And I'll tell you another thing, too, is we got a couple of these younger guys that have really been able to do well, you know, too, including one of the guys that's out right now, Woody, yep. who's a Greenfield resident. Bigger shove it's in the lane, had it, lost it, got it back. He put it up again. All right, seven minutes to play. We are definitely going to have two teams over 100. That does not always happen, Bobby. Wow. We have had all-star games where the teams just weren't shooting that well, and neither team hit 100. Tonight, we're going to have two. And actually, I have to say, I mean, it's probably too deep a hole, but this West team is starting to uh, make a comeback here. Three-pointer by Menard, left side, no good. Rebound comes down, alley-oop. Oh, caught him too far underneath the basket, <laughs> has Murray. They went for the alley-oop. Last call, the 50-50 raffle ticket, 178, 6 All right, 1990, 630 to play. Left side, Brendan Iman for three. Oh, no, that would have brought the house down. It was no good. Tipped around, Grigor Shevitz. Got the rebound, Acosta, Skies, banks it up, no good. Rebound, they throw it down. Here it comes Murray. Oh, he wanted to go for the dunk, but he got stripped on the way up by Jordan Lofman. Jordan, you gotta, you gotta let him throw it down. No, nah, yeah, it was Mike <laughs> Menard. Oh, Mike Menard. Mike Menard said, I told you we're not gonna let him go first. <laughs> Mike Menard said, no way, man. We're gonna be the first one to dunk it tonight. Aldrich <laughs> is going to take it across. Acosta <laughs> with a 40-foot jumper. No good, but Menard puts it up and in. Uh, I was going to say, there's six minutes left. That's not a buzzer beater. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sam Paul. Swings it on the left side. Shuffle pack. Evan Siza gets it over. Murray. 
can't penetrate. Taking his man, dishes it right side. Saiza for three, no good. Tipped around, little spin move, banked up and in, no Travel. traveling. Called him with steps at, at the All-Star game. They're saying traveling at the All-Star game, come on. What he gave him a travel. <laughs> Sorry, LeBron. Menard drives the lane, kicks it back. Aldrich, foul line, flings it up there, misses. And for his own rebound, no. Murray heads down court. On the right side, all the way through. High off the window, got it. Uh, nice Murray. move. That's a good move. 121-92. 132-94 was Bob's prediction. Yep, and I still, I, I'm still in the game here. Oh, wait a minute. Murray! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Went for the dunk and then he uh, committed <laughs> offensive goaltending. <laughs> That was awesome. I haven't seen one of those in years. <laughs> he went for the dunk. Yeah, we got the ref laughing. I mean, that's pretty good, man. He went for the dunk. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, that, was, that was that was that was that's the play of the game, by the way. <laughs> that was that was great. Oh. With the steal and the dunk, <laughs> 123 to 92. Uh, uh oh, we're gonna get him again. Hang on, Bob. Oh, they couldn't quite time it right. Uh. Couldn't quite time it right. Sam Paul, three ball, no good. Tipped around. Working on Gregor Shevitz. Goes by him. He will lay it up. Reverse lane hey, is good. Hey, why doesn't Brendan Iman or? Grafashevich, why don't those, one of those two guys set a pick for another guy and then the other guy can dunk it, man? Menard from 25, Three, matching one, his jersey nine. number, it's good. 125-95, 30 point game. Wow, these guys have really filled it up tonight. They hit again as the East continues to pile it on. 127, they're gonna, they may score 140 here tonight, Bobby. In, yeah, in, they're gonna beat my a, prediction. Yeah. In a 40 minute game, that's crazy. Acosta left side, no good. Oh, <laughs> that one was our fault because Murray was going to throw it down, but we have to take a radio timeout. We'll take a step uh, step aside, 30-second timeout. 3.57 to play, Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, 127 to 95 in favor of the East All-Stars. Back after this. <laughs> All right, we're back at Smith Academy for the final 3.57. And Kyle Murray of Amherst, who had just had a flush, was going to come in and ram it home again. And they blew the horn for us, for Bear Country, for the radio timeout. And I thought, no, let them finish the GM and then we'll take the break. But that's okay. That was something. Funny. Something tells me that someone will do something big again before we're done. But Murray's on the bench now. His night is done. We got the final. Now, if this had been a closer game, you would see a bunch of substitutions, but this game's been over for a while. Matt Foley from Smith for three. Back rim no good. Rebound, Johnny Earl hits 129. So I think they're going to hit 140 here. Yep. And now we just need the West guys to make it over 100. They missed right there. Calvin Bridges. Calvin was able to follow up and hit the bucket. So 129 to 97, so they're three away. Tell you right now, brother, Johnny Earl told me he wants a buck 50. That's what he told me. Buck fi when That's did he say he that? He told me at halftime. At halftime, okay. When it was 75, he wanted to double it. Three pointer put up on the right side, no good. Three again, left side no good, Helms the rebound. Well, they're running out of time for a buck fifty. Oh, coming through Helms, lost his footing. Missed the shot. They go back. Bridges will take a three. That is short. Bully, the rebound. Long pass down court. All the way through. Melu, the drive, no good. Tip followed by Earl, no good. They're still working, man. Helms, all the way through. Kicks it right side. Wide open three. Short, no good. A little, little deep on that one. Here comes Bully all the way through. Lays it up, no good. It was challenged by Colin Cloutier of Greenfield. Rothman on the right side. Ooh, losing control as he came through. They go back the other way. Siaglo will lay it up and in. Justin Siaglo. <laughs> 131 to 97. 
Long pass down, laid up and in. Calvin, Calvin Bridges. Bridges of South Hadley. Now they're at 99, so yep, they'll make, they'll make it over 100. John Rowe dishes it. Siaglo, his teammate, gets it right back. Here comes Melu, kicks it back. Siaglo, three ball top of the key, didn't get the bounce. Here comes Calvin Bridges, all the way through. Scoop shot is good. 131-101. So the league has fluctuated between 25 and 30 since uh, midway through the first half. It's been all, all east here tonight. Siaglo drives through, hits over Cloutier. And they're up to 133. Can you imagine if we had Moynihan and Peck here for the other team? It would be quite a game right now. And they've taken one more timeout. We'll step aside for a quick 30-second break. We're back for the final 132 of this one on Bear Country 95.3. Jeff Terrell, Bobby C., Dave Reno, studio producer. Next to last night of the basketball season, a fun night, and then we get serious again, and about as serious as you can get. Back-to-back -back state finals games tomorrow here on Bear Country. More on that during our post-game show. All righty. Got a lot of new guys out there. Bridges has been out there. Calvin Bridges from South Hadley. Tricky dribbling at the head of the circle. They go back. Cleared your new he missed. Ran down his own rebound. And a fadeaway J high off the window. No good. Minute 13 to play, John Earl all the way through. That blocked on the way up. All the way down to Bridges. Calvin lays it up and no good, but a foul. A rare foul here. You can see that's only the fifth foul in this entire second half. A buck four to play and a big, big lead for the East All-Stars. It's Calvin Bridges, who shoot a, shoot a couple here. So. Again, our schedule tomorrow, 3.15 pregame, 3.30 tip-off, East Hampton boys against Watertown, followed by the Hampshire girls against Archbishop Williams, girls D3 final. Second one good, 133-103. John Earl had it, give it back to Melu. John Earl has it, dumps it down low, back to Melu. nice give and go there, hits. Under a minute to play. Jordan Lachman on the left. They get it down low. He shoots again to score, no. This ball on the floor. They're battling here. Cloutier, he had a three earlier. Jacks went up there, no good. Yeah, these guys are dragging now, Bobby. Oh Look yeah. At them. <laughs> well, they've been running. They've been running for 40 minutes. Seattle pops one for three. They're up to 138. 138-103. Calvin Bridges, top of the key, three. Rims out on that one. Melu, the rebound. And it's Siaglo. John Earl, is he going to close the game on a three? Nope, back iron. No good. Two seconds, one. Half court shot is up. No good. Ball game over. The East All Stars, 138. The West, 103. Stay tuned. Our post game show next on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. First, we're the East team with a team high 18 points from Hopkins Academy, Justin Siaglo. Back here on the post-game show, they're announcing the most outstanding players, Justin Siaglo from Hopkins and for from the East. the West, with a game high 34 points <laughs> from South Hadley, Calvin Bridges. 
And Calvin Bridges lit it up for 34 here at the All-Star Game. And he's the most outstanding player. Congratulations uh, to those guys. Uh, Bobby, a great night of basketball here. And obviously a great night, not just the play on the court and the camaraderie that we saw with the kids, but uh, but what it was all about, the scholarship fund for the uh, for the local uh, the local board of officials. Surely was, and a big congratulations goes out to the kids here today that had a chance to be able to showcase some fun here in front of a nice crowd. You know, 138, 103, that surely is fun. Um, thought it was cool that the board does this since 1982. We're talking major opportunity to help out these student athletes with scholarships. Like Nate Burdick said, they try to give anywhere from six to seven $500 scholarships every year. So that's between $3,000 and $3,500 that they're giving out. And it's not only from events like this, but it's also from the officials themselves who make that contribution. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So it's been a great night, bud. And I just want to say, Dave Keir, congratulations on the Tom Cove uh, Award. Also, a big congratulations to Belchertown High School for getting that sportsmanship award. And to our two officials from this board that are going to be a big part of you know, championship Saturday tomorrow. Nate Burdick will be doing the Division Two girls and Andy Rogers, the Division One boys. So it's just an exciting thing to be able to be a part of here tonight. And it is my first event. And I thank you again, Jeff. Sorry that our buddy Chris Collins is a little under the weather tonight, but I know he's going to be hopefully ready tomorrow for two huge games that we have. Great job, brother. Hey, it's great to see you, man. That's you know, right. Justin Siagolo just people. came by. Yeah, they're uh, just great kids. You know, shake our hand. Well, you know, we've we've built friendships ourselves, haven't we, over the years of doing this for the kids. So, Jeff, it's been a great season. I want to thank you again, buddy, for having me. It's been a, always fun, and you know, I always tell everybody I do this for one reason, and it's for the kids. And if you have an opportunity to be able to get out and make a difference in your community, whether you're a coach or if you can be able to be a mentor in any way, you should do it because it's days like this where it really feels good in the belly, let me tell you. Well, practice for, uh, for the winter sports season begins the Monday after Thanksgiving, the basketball season. They, they, have, they have scrimmages. The season gets underway in early December, and then it just seems to go by so fast. And sadly, we are down to our last two games but what a way to go out. Two state finals. And, Bobby, you think, I mean, we don't really know about Archbishop Williams girls. We don't know about the Watertown boys. Obviously, they're very good basketball teams. Maybe two Western Mass teams take home state titles tomorrow? I think they do. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you why. Because I think they have what they need. They have the fire in the belly, good coaches. Amy Sear gets it done at Hampshire. Can't say enough about, you know, Coach Brian. And uh, he's just a great coach, too. And you look back and you say to yourself, okay, you got Coach Miller, you got Coach Sear, you got great athletes, you got kids that want to make it happen. And I'll tell you right now, Watertown, you better be ready because this team will run you out of the gym and you might be grabbing your shorts in the beginning of the fourth quarter because that's exactly what happened with Sutton High School over at AIC earlier this week. On the flip side, if you've never seen Caitlin Pakunka play, well, guess what, folks? She's going for gold, and she's going to go for it in Springfield tomorrow. All right, both games are at Springfield College back-to-back. -back. The East Hampton boys first, followed by the Hampshire girls. Our coverage begins at 3.15, live from, break, uh, from Blake Arena at Springfield College. All right, our final scores here for the two ball games tonight in the girls' all-star game. It was the West, 69, the East, 68, and on the boys' side, the East, with a huge win, 138-103 over the West. For Bobby C. and for Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Join us again tomorrow right here on Bear Country 95.3.